Mark Galliotti, Senior Researcher at the Institute of International Relations, Prague. Um, I think the biggest security threat that Europe faces is, is frankly Europe's own insecurities and failures to, to make good on its promises to its people and, and to itself. Um, we look very much at the Russian threat, obviously. The point is that Russia is an impoverished and declining country. It, it can do a lot of mischief, but mainly the mischief it can do is because of our own weaknesses, our own failures. Um, Russian propaganda is only useful because people are sort of already sceptical about their own mass media. Mm -hmm. um, Russian corruption is only possible because we fail to actually police where money comes from and, and, and such like. You know, Russian political pressure is only possible because of divisions and uncertainties within Europe. Mm -hmm. So although we, we, we look outside, we look at the migrant issue from the south, we look at the, sort of the, the challenge from, from, from Russia, mm -hmm. but ultimately the reason why these are threats are actually because of failures within Europe. And we actually, I think, have to take another really strong look at what Europe is about. Mm -hmm. um, is it really about ever closer union? I think that is actually one of the problems, mm -hmm. is you actually have a European Commission, which in many ways is embarked on a project which is very different from that which most of the European countries want to see. Mm -hmm. Um, events like this are obviously fairly low on optimism, um, but on the other hand, I mean, I, I think I think there are. I think actually, if we see, I mean, if we see what, what what's what's been going on in the Middle East, which is obviously sort of horrific, um, and it might seem almost tasteless to be trying to look for some sort of positive signs, but I think it has actually begun to act as a wake-up call in two particular ways. Firstly, in terms of our awareness of the mischief that Putin mm -hmm. and Russia can can create. Um, most recently with, yeah. with, with the um, bombing of eastern Aleppo. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it has made us realise the extent to which actually you know, there is a genuine existential political threat to, mm -hmm. to, the, to Europe that can come not directly from Russia, but from Russia's attempts to meddle with the international mm -hmm. order. So I think that awareness is an important mm -hmm. point. The second awareness is precisely um, the sense to which we realise that security is not just about tanks potentially crossing borders, mm -hmm. but it's about people, it's about ideas and so forth. Now, we then have to move to the next stage, and events like the Warsaw Security Forum help with that, of deciding, okay, so what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. But the point is, the first stage is, is, is crucial, actually realising where the threats lie. I think now we're coming to terms with that. We, we need to recognise that the West has extraordinary strengths. We are, we are far too quick to look at our failures, far too quick to look at our weaknesses, where actually, you know, this is a really strong narrative. And what's more, it's a narrative that people want to be part of, whether they're Ukrainians or Georgians, or indeed for many, the people from North Africa and, and the Middle East. You know, actually, it's, 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 our, it's a lot of it is they want to be able to not just enjoy our economic success, but they also want to share in our values in many cases. Mm -hmm. You know, for every one potential jihadist, yeah. there are 99 who actually just want to basically enjoy what Europe enjoys. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is actually something that we, we too easily forget, and I think mm -hmm. is actually something that we need to remember more often. Well, I think, I mean, for me, what, what's interesting is that precisely this is a Central European perspective. There are, there are you know, guests from all over, um, but it actually has a very different vibe from events that you find in Washington or mm -hmm. Paris or London or, or Berlin. Um, well, I think, firstly, obviously, th these are people who actually f feel themselves at the front line mm -hmm. um, of, of the current sort of normative struggle between yeah. those who want to protect the liberal order and, mm -hmm. and those who are challenging it. Um, secondly, these are all, you know, again, th th this is from the perspective of a country which, with, within living memory, has, has been under well, Soviet, I, yeah. Muscovite domination, mm -hmm. which, again, gives it a different perspective. But thirdly, and in some ways, I think more importantly, is precisely this is the, 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 the rising tide, this is the rising generation. Increasingly, we're seeing that NATO, and to an extent the European Union, instead of just think, seeing Central Europe yeah. as an area that you have to help and look after, mm -hmm. actually is experiencing it as people who are beginning to lead on many debates and mm -hmm. such like. So I mean, I think that, that's what's really interesting about this particular forum, mm -hmm. is it's precisely, it, it, it's seeing and feeling Central Europe begin to actually have more confidence in itself and more of a voice in decision-making mm -hmm. processes.